independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. The number of weekly jobless claims continues its decline. Last week, 473,000 people filed first-time claims for unemployment benefits. That's the lowest number since mid-March of 2020. The pandemic took a toll on the labor force. There are still more than 16 million Americans receiving some kind of jobless aid. Yep. Not because there's not jobs. 8.1 million jobs are available right now. More and more states are pulling back. Idaho, Wyoming, Republican states are essentially saying, all right, you know what? It's time to get rid of these these, these benefits. The, the way that people are getting benefits, there are jobs out there, and people are deciding not to work for whatever reason. Now, if fear is a real thing, that's, that, that's tough. But, hey, you can't say I'm terrified. I don't want to go back to work and expect everybody to pick up the check. At some point, you got to take that step, right? There are jobs available. Maybe it's not the job I want. Uh, before, I had another job, and I like that job. This is what we've got in front of us. And it'll be interesting as we climb out of this, especially when you start to look at the numbers are continuing to fall, the coronavirus here in the United States. It's not over. And we've talked about it. It's never going anywhere. Not at this moment in time. It just isn't going to happen. It's going to putter along. As it continues to do, eventually it's going to get down to the point where it's virtually nothing. But it may always be here, and we'll get spikes here and there. Endemic, pandemic, two different things. So this is what we've got. More, I went out last night to get some food. I wasn't feeling good the last couple of days. I've had a horrific sinus and allergies, a little bit of both. And uh, I just went over and I've got, you know, some food so I can keep here at work because I, I got a hotel because just part of it is where I live is they're getting ready to plant cotton and do all kinds of things. And I tell you what, when I get off the freeway, it is my head just mm. it's crazy because they're they're tearing up the dirt. They're doing all kinds of things. It's very windy where I live. And I'll tell you this right now. I stayed at a hotel last night. I went to bed at seven, like 30. I went over. I got some food. Came back to my little hotel suite and ate some food. And I was out like a light. Feel a lot better. I do. I feel a lot better. Got some sleep. But I was talking to the front desk people. The guy's like, I'm like, dude, do you ever sleep? He's like, he jokes about with me. He goes, he goes, we can't get some people to work here. He goes, I have to come here. My shifts are basically 12 hours now. He goes, he goes we essentially have four people at the desk. And we should have at least eight or 10. He goes, we're just kind of all doing 12 hour shifts. Sometimes we're doing 16 hours. It's crazy. It's crazy. Jobs are out there. Coronavirus is getting less and less. I was at the store last night. I would say 60% of the people weren't even wearing a mask. Like people were worried about it anymore. Even here, around here, inside the office that was very much a super mask place. At best now, it's chin diapers for most people. (laughs) That's at best. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. How do you get people vaccinated? Mike DeWine, Governor, Ohio. has got an idea. On May 26th, we will announce a winner of a separate drawing for adults. Adults who have received at least their first dose of the vaccine. This announcement will occur each Wednesday for five weeks. And the winner each Wednesday will receive one million one million dollars a million dollar bills yo that's what you're going to be getting there so if you've got a vaccine at least one dose in ohio you're eligible if you're over the age of 18 to win why because they have so much money some of these states have no idea what to do with this money they just we printed so much and decided here here's a bunch of money They're trying to figure out what to do with it. California's got a windfall. What are you going to do with it? You got all this money. How are you going to? It's like they won the lottery, so they're passing it on to people. That's how they're trying to get people vaccinated. What do you do with it? I don't know. Hey, I got an idea. Let's have a drawing. I said yesterday, how about uh, 
Screw the drawing side of it as far as that. Maybe do that every Wednesday. Every day, every time you go in, you get some sort of scratcher from the state, and you'll win something. You're guaranteed to win something. Could be something silly, right? All the way up to like five or $10,000 cash. <gasps> Why not? Let's just, if we're going to do it, right? We've got all this money, and, and we know government, what? You spend it or you lose it. And they've given it to you, so you better spend it. To be eligible to win, you must be at least 18 years of age or older on the day of the drawing. You must be an Ohio resident, and you must be vaccinated before the drawing. So you got to be vaccinated before the drawing. Well, what about kids? This is where I said, and it sounds like they're, they're moving in that direction where, hey, if you're from ages 12 to 15, because that's the age group now that you can do that, and 16 and 17 already as well from this. But if, how about a scholarship, in-state tuition paid for? Little things, that's what they're trying to do. Little things because they've got such a massive, massive, amount of cash they have to spend. So they're trying to figure out what do they do with it. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. Yesterday, looking at people in Georgia, North Carolina, throughout parts of the Southeast, lose their mind over the potential of a gas shortage. I explained it to you yesterday. I'll do it again. Colonial did not pay the ransom, supposedly. They're up and running, and things are getting pumped again. It just shows you how unstable people can be in in situations. It's always one of those things where, you, you know, like, there are just some people that are, that are, they have it. They don't panic. In situations that get a little uncomfortable, they don't panic. In situations where there's a potential of something going wrong, they don't panic. And then there's everybody else. And everybody else was losing their mind yesterday. What if we don't have enough? It's the what if we don't have enough scenario. So go get as much as you can right now. Rather than go, hey, do we have enough gas? Oh, we have more than enough gas. But why is gas prices going up? Well, it has to do with the fact that the pipeline, the cyber hacks, and still we're having issues because we don't have enough owner operators to fill up for a lot of places through not just in the southeast and the east but also across the country out here in, in the west the reason that prices have gone up in, in even on the west coast side of things is because we just don't have people that can get the gas to the places it needs to get to to service the people that's it it's as simple as that but people flipped out yesterday they were fighting they were arguing and they were doing silly things how many Bags? Did you see? I have. I'm amazed at that. I am absolutely amazed. If you haven't seen some of the pictures of people who are putting grocery bags, they're filling anything up that they can with gas. There was a guy with a jacuzzi in the back of his truck. Are you kidding me? Look at my shoes. They're soaked. Ask me why my shoes are soaked with gasoline. I was driving down the road and I hit a pothole. And I hear a splash coming from the trunk. So I pull over and I open the trunk. Gasoline pours out onto my feet. I thought, oh my God, why is there gasoline in the trunk? Sure enough, I look back there and there are six loose bags of gasoline. One of which has burst and is pouring out onto my Louis Vuitton shoes. I thought to myself, surely my genius of a husband didn't fill up six loose bags of gasoline and stuff them into the trunk of my Subaru Outback. Myself, could you imagine if your husband did such a thing? People did yesterday. People did. People panicked. People flipped out. We got a call from family that said, you better fuel up before you hit Tennessee. There is panic at the pump from Virginia all the way down to Florida. I was suspected just prices would go way up. I didn't suspect that there wouldn't be any the next day. We put a stop to the can sales th today. People were coming in and, you know, five and ten cans worth of gasoline. They're just hoarding it. The first thinking is, oh, boy, prices are going to skyrocket and I need to fill everything I can with gas. And so uh, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy that actually makes the problem much more acute. Yeah. Well, they're back up and running. Everybody can take a deep breath now. It may be a few days before things get back to where they were. Producer Phil, did anything happen overnight as far as gas prices? 
Uh, no, I was checking the other day, but then I I realized that if I can't get gas, why well, I just won't cut the lawn this weekend. There you go. Right? Perfect. And we're already in a hybrid mode. It's not like you can't say, hey, you know what? Uh, I don't have enough gas to get. I have enough gas to get to work. I don't have enough gas to get home, and I don't want to chance it. And your boss will probably say it's okay. We're going to be fine. But what this does show you is the fear that a little bit of uncomfortable situations for a day or two throws everything off. That's just, it's crazy. It is. <laughs> We're going to be fine. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Love hearing from you. Omaha Steaks. Love my Omaha Steaks. Gobbled them up. So I got the Let's Go Grill package. So Omaha Steaks came to me and said, hey, we're really interested in working with you. I said, I'd love to work with you guys. I've, I've had your food for years. And they said, well, we're going to see a new package. Send me a new package. Let's go grill. It's got four fillets in it, four chicken breast, pork chops. Oh, those are delicious. Uh, it's got the kielbasa, which was delicious, but also has hamburgers. He sent me an amazing giant set of hamburgers on top of the ones that were already in there. This Let's Go Grill package has, has apple tartlets. It has potatoes. It's incredible. I love it. So I got it, not this past Friday, Friday before last. I have nothing left. I think I have two kill bosses. There's four kill bosses. I think I have two left, and that's it, and a couple burgers. Get your Let's Go Grill package right now. Go to omahasteaks.com. Top of that, they're going to throw you in 12 extra burger patties, a $44 value free, and $20 off your first order. All you have to do is go to omahasteaks.com. There's a search, a search bar at the top. Type in Chad. That's the keyword. Up pops this. Take advantage of this. And as we get ready to grill, as the summertime is really starting to arrive, as it's getting warmer and you're wanting to get back out there and have friends over, this is the perfect thing. Let's go grill from Omaha Steaks. $20 off your first order with the fillets, the chicken breast, the kielbasa, the pork chops, the burgers. They're going to throw extra burgers in as well. Get it now. Let's go grill. OmahaSteaks.com. Keyword Chad. Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show, where we reach across the aisle and occasionally poke someone in the eye. My uh, national security staff and defense staff has been in constant contact with their counterparts in the Middle East, uh, not just with the Israelis, but also with uh, everyone from the Egyptians of the Saudis to the Emiratis, etc. And uh, I had a conversation with Bibi Netanyahu. Uh, I'll be putting out a statement very shortly on that. My expectation and hope is that this will be uh, closing down sooner than later. Biden on Israel. My expectation is they'll stop shooting rockets at each other sooner rather than later. It's a test in some ways. It is. But Bibi's also testing and pushing back. And the reason is, are you going to help? Or are you not going to help? How are you going to come at us? Because now you've got people, and this is where the left... You've got the AOCs, the Ilhan Omars, the Ariana Presleys, of course. It's this Israel's bad things. Israel's evil. It's genocide. They're all bad, bad, bad. And I just sit there and I, I go back over and over again. You've got a place where you've got a lot of people that claim, you know, everybody's got some sort of map or area that predates who's ever there now. And then somebody else takes out and go, we've got another map in an area. And, you know, you're at the point now where it's like those people don't even exist anymore. This is what's going on there, and they're all fighting. Plus, you've got all the holy places within, like, a square block of each other, it feels like. And based on the earth, it's kind of what it is. And there's fighting over it every day. And you have an embattled prime minister in Bibi Netanyahu who's also pushing back a little bit. And, you know, when people get in a situation where they feel like, hey, things are going a little bit south, and a lot of that had to do with last month, He's still struggling at times. He's under immense amount of pressure. And you've got, you had Ramadan and people pushed back and the Israelis did as far as, you know, I always, I was saying this, everyone wants to go to a wall. <laughs> we're going to fight over a wall. That's what we're going to. Then, no, it's our, our God gave us this. No, my God gave me this one. No, it's our God gave us this one. Well, it's our, and you're just sitting there going, uh, God's probably like, I should have just gave him two walls. <laughs> Israel has a right to defend itself when you have thousands of rockets flying into 
your territory, but uh, I had a, a conversation for a while with, with the uh, Prime Minister of Israel, and uh, I think that uh, my hope is that we'll see uh, this coming to conclusion sooner than later. Thank you. So that's what it is, you know. The walls are used as they continue to battle. And that's so much of what it is. You got wall here for this. You got a wall there for that. You've got this wall, that wall. This wall is holy. No, it's this wall. No, but we're supposed to be here. And like I said, God's probably going, should have gave him two walls. <laughs> should have been clearer on that. <laughs> Didn't I say build two walls? Does nobody listen to me? No, no, nobody listens to you. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter Tweet at us. Text the program. Ellen is done. It's the end of the road for Ellen. Ellen DeGeneres will retire her successful syndicated daytime talk show after next season. She tells The Hollywood Reporter that when you're a creative person, you constantly need to be challenged. And as great as the show is, it's just not a challenge anymore. She insists the decision has nothing to do with the recent scandal over the show fostering a toxic workplace environment and claims this has been in the works for years. Next year will be the show's 19th season on the air. We'll be back. Uh, 19 seasons done. By the way, just to let you know, she makes $50 million a year off that show. She's claiming she just needs to step out a little bit and start to be more creative and do creative things. And I think, you know, maybe some of that's true. Uh, you can get stale. I mean, let's be real. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a situation. where, And some people are fine with just doing the same thing over and over again. I think Ellen was that. But I also think that the controversy hurts did not help her it didn't and i think i I look at somebody like alan and i don't know what the the environment was like there i've worked in a lot of places that you well in today's world you consider toxic back then you just shook your head and got on with things uh we don't do that now we don't and in certain places in hollywood it's you know i don't even know how they function day to day in fact we're going to talk about that so two days ago a lady everybody was rallying behind because the director was mean to her, is now getting somewhat canceled herself. Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. People are concerned about child care today as well as their own personal health. And so I think that's keeping people out of the workforce. Anecdotally, we're also hearing that folks just aren't ready to return to work just yet uh, as robust stimulus packages as well as unemployment benefits have been very strong over the past few months and will continue to be so through the summer. And we have a re-emerging economy. And so as, as many businesses are reopening, there's a need for more talent. And uh, there are plenty of jobs across the U.S. today for folks who are ready to get back to work. Yeah. And some states are going to start pushing that to happen, taking away some of those generous benefits that have allowed people to say, well, eh, I don't really want to go back to work. That's Scott Boatwright from Chipotle. The big week there. And he is for that. At some point in time, right, you know, you, 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 it's, it's like a bird. Got to let it fly. It's time to leave the nest. Let's see what happens. It's been long enough. We need to get people back out there. Businesses are struggling to find workers. Yesterday, I, I posted something on Twitter, which, by the way, I did not. You know, I, I, I got into social media for a while because it was kind of like, you know, that's what I have to do from a I, – it's, it's tough. People are just awful. Doesn't matter what it is. You know, you'll post something. You'll, you could say, hi, hope you have a great day. And people are like, hey, I saw a picture of you, and I think you're gross. Oh, okay. No, no, no reason. No, no, nothing. No, not, you have a great day, too. And that's – but I posted something, right? So early in the morning, I get this thing. It's a funny little meme from – I'd love to take credit for it. But uh, Mr. Mr. Phil sent it to us. And it says, someone should start a rumor of a shortage of jobs so everybody – panics and gets one 
been retweeted hundreds of times, liked and loved or whatever it is, thousands of times. I'm like, wow, that's really crazy. And in doing so, people started battling. People don't even follow me over how evil employers are, how poverty is all the employer's fault. How And it is just, you're just sitting back and you're just like, my goodness me. And you guys are nuts. You're fighting over stuff. We have made it too generous. It is time now for people to start working. They're still talking about another round of stimulus. People are for it. People are for it. If you're going to give them money, they're for it. You know what's not for it? Look at the market. Market's slowing down. There are fears of inflation. We've overprinted. We've overpromised. We're weakening the dollar's value, which makes it what? Let me tell you how this works. It means your dollar doesn't go as far. Everybody in Venezuela is a billionaire. Except for the fact that that billion is useless. It's a waste of time. It's worthless. That's the fear here. And you've got a group of people in the feds, and Janet Yellen and all the fed chairmen before her and, and, and the ones after who still think in some way, shape or form they're able to do enough to fight inflation, which they can do some stuff. But much like nature... The market will do what it does, and it can mess you up. It's time to get people back to work. The extra federal unemployment assistance. A half dozen states now have announced that they're going to end those benefits before they expire. Is that the right move? I certainly believe so. I think it, it encourages folks to get back to work. There are a number of jobs available across all the industry today. Uh, and for us to continue to grow the economy here in the U.S., we've got to have people ready and willing to engage, get back to work, and continue to drive the economy. Yeah. Continue to drive the economy. That's a great thing because people do need to get back to work. People need to get back out there. People are getting vaccinated. We've got a ton of people vaccinated. Majority of adults in America uh, America has been vaccinated. Kids now from 12 to 15 can get vaccinated starting today. I still think that's going to be at a much lower. And I'm going to tell you why. I think it's going to be much lower. It's May. Kids are out of school in the next couple weeks. Some are already on their way out summer school is going to be hit and miss in a lot of places i think in fall as we i mean as we head towards the end of summer and school starts to become top of mind say mid to late july is you know as we head into august i think you may see that have a have a jump up a little bit in, in that but as far as adults working age people should be out there working it's time to get out working it is so you've got a majority of working age adults that have been vaccinated and the elderly And some people are still saying, I'm scared. I can't fix that. If you're going to live in fear like that, people are going to push back on me. Because yesterday we were talking about that kid who's like, he can't wait to get vaccinated because he saw his friend get sick. You've probably probably been sick with the flu. Yeah, but it's not the same. No, but if you look at the data, it's funny because people come to me the other day and said, Chad, you're so misinformed. Coronavirus has killed more than the, 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 the flu does for children. Look at how many kids get hospitalized with the flu and look how many die. Now, you're looking at an almost 18 months running total. We don't do that with the flu. It's 13 week periods. Seasonal. At best, it's probably 20 to 22 total weeks a year. Oh, yeah. I never thought of that. We're just we're keeping this running tally. We don't do that with the flu. Remember, flu is a seasonal, you know, at best, it's at best, it's 26 weeks. On average, it's probably about 20 weeks a year. So if you were to do 52 weeks a year and then you multiply that by, you know, well, and you add on another six months on top of it, you start looking up and go, oh, I looked at that. That's some... So if the fear factors, I'm not going to go back to work because of this or because of that, and, and I, even though you've been vaccinated... How do we deal with that? As, as you, if you're an employer and you're, you're like, my person doesn't want to come back to work. I have a job that needs to get done. I have to replace you. People are frustrated. Owners of businesses. Well, they're bad because they just want, they just want slave labor. Ugh. McDonald's is hiking their wages. Somebody asked me yesterday, Chad, you're, they said, how, explain to me, if you're so smart, how raising wages is 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 going to cost the customer more money and raise prices. I'm like, 
spoken like somebody's an employee and not an employer. You're asking workers during a pandemic to put themselves at increased risk. The CEO said in December, you're not going to require vaccinations. Do you see that changing? Well, we won't require vaccinations, Anna, but what we are doing is providing education to all of our 100,000 employees around why the vaccination is important. Yeah. And stop, uh, you're asking people to put themselves more at risk. Life is risk every day. We step out that door. We take a risk. We know what the calculated risk is. You've got opportunities to get vaccines now. If you choose not to, that's a you thing. And chances are, if you choose not to, it's because you don't think this is a big deal. When you start breaking down like, well, you know, it's it's still a pandemic. It's endemic, not pandemic. We need to move away from that. You've got to start looking at different ways, th- different things to, th- that we actually start and, and different ways to talk about this. Enough's enough. Time to get back to work, kids. It's time. It's time. And if you don't want to work, should the American people have to pay for you not to work? Because I think all of us would sign up for, I don't want to work. Could you pay for me not to work? And also, could you pay for me at such a level that you keep me, you know, kind of where I'm at now comfortably? 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. And by the way, just to let you guys know, on average, on average, when it comes to salaries and wages and businesses, you are looking anywhere between about 23 to about 50% of operational budgets inside of a business goes to salary, wages, and other things. If you're spending 50% of your money on employees, how could it not affect the customer and prices? 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show. It's your Twitter, kids. You could tweet at us. You could text the program. Love hearing from all of you every single day. By the way, the, the Houston kitty cat, The tiger. Well, if you've got tiger issues, what do you do? You bring in the likes of the Carol Baskins of the world and other experts to talk about tigers and lions and such. And, you know, because it's still there. They don't know where that tiger is. There's a tiger in Houston, Texas, wandering around a neighborhood. Guy gets arrested because they think he had the tiger. And he's like, look, I don't got the tiger, uh, but nobody's seen the tiger. And this is such a Texas thing. If people were to come across a big cat with no way of escaping, I mean, if they can, they should get in a car or a building. But if they can't do that, they should do exactly what that off-duty deputy did, which is to keep eye contact with the cat to not run, to not turn your eyes away. Yeah. Don't run. It's like bears. Here's when you try to escape a bear. When you have somebody else that's with you that's way slower. That's always the first. You look over and you say to yourself, like, if you're there and you look over and you're like, oh, God, I have the worst time to go camping with Usain Bolt. Like, that's because you're screwed at that point in time. But you keep eye contact, and same thing with big cats. And by the way, if, eh, big cat versus bear, probably taking a big cat. That's how amazing big cats are. Because you look at your cat at home and all the things it can do and how obnoxious it is, then you multiply that by a quadrillion, and that's a big cat. But when there's cubs around for a bear, that's when you need to just get the hell out of there. But if you're out in the middle of the street and you see yourself in front of a tiger, right? Are you thinking, I'm going to take my dog for a walk? Don't. If it is out running loose and hiding, it's going to be active more at night. And so people should keep their children and their pets inside. That's right. Keep your kids. Lock your wives. (laughs) Hide your kids. Hide your wives. You got nothing to worry. That, That tiger is in somebody's backyard right now. That tiger is hidden somewhere else. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Raycons, best earbuds around. They got the E25s and the E55s. E55s 
are amazing. E25s. Let's start with those. Those are the everyday. So you get these E25s, and what do they do for you? Well, first and foremost, the sound quality is second to none. Seamless Bluetooth pairing. But it's the fit. The designed in such a way that when you get them in your ears, you barely feel feel them, and it's a noise isolating fit that is just amazing. So whether you're listening to the Chad Benson show, whether it's the podcast or live, or maybe you're listening to who knows what, right? Maybe you're like, I'm really into polka music. The quality is ridiculous. Six hours of talk time, seamless Bluetooth pairing, and charging case, which is awesome. E55s, amazing charging case. Once you charge the case. And the case, like, it's charged, and you put your earbuds in there. there you don't have to worry about they're wirelessly charging. You don't have to be plugged in anything. Six hours of talk time, seamless Bluetooth pairing. These things have just moved the bar in such a way, the Raycons. There's no stems. There's no wires. The fit, the design, different colors, 45-day happiness guarantee. You don't like them, you send them back. Free shipping. Right now, E25s start under 70 bucks. When you go to buyraycon.com slash chad, E55's right around $100. Again, free shipping, 45-day money-back guarantee. Get yours now. Best earbuds around. Buyraycon.com slash chad. Buyraycon.com slash chad. Chad Benson Show. You stink like Fear and white male privilege to me. I do often out myself verbally as a gender. My pronouns are they, them, and I'm proud to be a gender. Are you stupid? <laughs> Robin! What? Are you kidding me? Not a great way to use your white privilege. Some people get it, some people don't. You're listening to The Chad Benson Show. You guys haven't heard. Tragic passing of Dionne Warwick, described by Dionne, who found out she's dead. I am alive and kicking. Now, this is the second time it ever made me dead, <laughs> which I think is not very nice. I didn't die, as you can see. I am totally alive. But thank you for caring enough to have sorrow for me. <laughs> Worry not, Dionne Warwick is definitely alive. Yep, she's 80, still alive. That's what friends are for. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? She has to be. She has to be. Say a little prayer, love it. Walk on by. Do you know the way to San Jose? I'll never fall in love again. Yeah, she's got to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But she's alive because somebody apparently said, hey, did you guys hear about her dying? And I was like, what? I don't, I don't, no, no. Does she know this? Because I think she'd be surprised to hear that she died. She has not died. She is alive. She is well. And she's 80 years old. Speaking of alive and well, the NFL, baby. Yesterday, huge day, huge. The NFL schedule was released. Some big games. I was looking at it. I was like, man, there's some big games here. Obviously, for me, I'm looking at the Bills Patriots. It's going to be great. Week 16. That's if the Patriots are good. But the Patriots have to do a lot of different things to get to a point where they're competitive again. And they're going to have to see the legend that is Tom Brady. Because he's rolling in. That's right. He is rolling in to Foxborough. That's going to be massive. That is going to be huge. They open up kickoff weekend. They'll take the Cowboys on. And they here's funny. If you look at the schedule... Could you be looking at, what is it, number? I don't even, is it eight? Would this be eight for him? The schedule this year, he's in a division that's weak. It's not his fault. It's not. This is not a strong division. 
and how they break it down on the play. You know, uh, you know who you play. You'll play from the other side, the AFC. This year, you're playing the East. That's pretty weak division uh, right now. I mean, you know, so you start breaking things down. You got the Jets, not very good. Patriots, you know, Miami, we're not quite. It's not like it's great. And outside of the Bills, you know, it looks awesome. It does. So there's some good games. I can't wait. Bills, Chiefs, week five. Massive. Massive. Chiefs, Ravens, week two will be huge. You got some big debuts. Trevor Lawrence will take on the Texans. It's a road game, but it's still pretty awesome. And think about this right now. Texans don't really have a big defense. J.J. Watt's gone. He's out here in Arizona. Uh, that could be very interesting. You know, you know if there's going to be – is there going to be any Deshaun Watson? Because that's kind of like, you know, I don't even know how many we're up to now when it comes to people who have filed some sort of lawsuit against him, masseuses. Then on the other side of things, you've got some neat, exciting opportunities to see some of these rookies. How fast will your team – Throw in their rookie quarterback. And then for you guys, Phil, you got Fitz Magic now, and he thinks he's got the best defense out there, and that's the recipe for you guys to win a Super Bowl. So we shall see if the Washington Football Club can win a Super Bowl. I'm thinking not this year. Jeff Benson Joe. Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. The number of weekly jobless claims continues its decline. Last week, 473,000 people filed first-time claims for unemployment benefits. That's the lowest number since mid-March of 2020. The pandemic took a toll on the labor force. There are still more than 16 million Americans receiving some kind of jobless aid. But there's 8.1 million jobs available. Good jobs available if you'd like to get some, so feel free to grab yourself some if you'd like some. Get two if you want. We're okay with that. We are not those kind of people that are saying no. Jobs are out there. Do you want to work? It's pretty simple. Doesn't get any easier than that. But now you've got to start looking at things like inflation. Consumers are looking around. See what's going on in the stock market right now. People are asking, why is the stock market going in such a way? Uh, because there are worries. Investors are worried. You're going to see some erratic movements over the next few days. People are going to be taking some money out in certain places, moving it in other places. That's why you'll see some some swings. That that affects your 401k. We're still closing in on 34000 All right? So there's nothing to be freaking out about. But there is a worry that sooner rather than later, they're going to have to make money a little bit more expensive when it comes to borrowing even now they're starting to tighten some of the restrictions some of the some of the qualifications for home buying seeing a lot of that right now i have a couple people i work with out here one in particular that uh, you know is a company i work with in my local show and we talk about it all the time the they're starting to and they're direct lenders they're starting to adjust some of their qualifications right now because they're worried prices as high as they are right now, uh, but as cheap as money is, many people came in and they bought and they bought and they bought. But now they may start playing around with some of those interest rates. There's no need to panic just yet. But then you've got to look at other thing. Cost of stuff, man. It's cost of stuff. It's going through the roof. Consumer price index showed that prices are up over last year. Well, that's to be expected. I don't think that was a surprise to the market. I do think that what we'll look for in the months to come is our prices continuing to be up. Some of those things are like the gas prices right now. It's not because we don't have enough. We've got more than enough product. It's getting the product to the places they need to be. We have a shortage of drivers, which caused a jump in prices, and then on the southeast part of the country through the northeast part of the country over the last 10 days or so, you've seen the spike, especially over the last, I'd say, 72 hours, 
and the freaking out because of something that has zero to do with do we have enough. We had a cyber attack and we're still short drivers. Why does that matter? Because if you can't get it. So how it works is they pump these pipelines from Texas and this is all fuel. So you've got jet fuel, you've got the diesel fuel, you've got you've got you know the, the regular you've got all of the, they pump these things all the way through. I mean, we're talking about heating oil, all that stuff. And it goes to these storage containers of which the giant huge metal and you see them steel containers that the truck drivers drive, they go over there and they fill up and they take it to the places to be. We don't have the truck drivers going over there. Because when the pandemic hit, people weren't driving. So they, there was no need for gas. If you're staying at home, yeah. look, how many of you last year saved a ton of money because you didn't have to drive? You're like, yeah, I did. Maybe fill up, you'd fill up maybe twice a week, three times a week. Now you're like, ah, I fill up every other week. And now that we're back to driving, now that we're back to start traveling again, we're doing all of these things. Those owner-operators went out of business. You have to have special licenses. So that's it. So there's enough product. Some products, there's lots of pressure. Lumber. We don't have enough. We don't have enough lumber. Prices through the roof. There's pressure on certain things because we don't have enough product at this moment in time. Everybody needs to take a step back. But things are going to be a little bit more expensive. And the more that we continue to pump money into stuff... I, I, yesterday, as my going back, putting on my old, you know, when I was a broker hat and still following the markets and, you know, I I, I want to see what, what do we look like? You know, like Trump and, and Obama and them, they can all tout how amazing their economies were, right? But there's also a very real question. What do we look like without the feds pumping money? What do we look like when eventually they turn the spigot off and we kind of have to stand on our own? And that will be very interesting to see what happens because the amount of money they've pumped in and now the amount of money we're borrowing, uh, this this could eventually end up being, uh, we could get a real check here. And I don't mean a check in the mail, like a real reality check. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Kids can start getting vaccinated a lot of places today. But the battle of how this thing even began is still heating up, still going on. Because more and more people, even on the left, are asking serious questions about coronavirus itself. Rand Paul and Fauci, who are not best friends, by the way, will not be sharing any kind of 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 Christmas cards or or any of those other things. They got in and again the other day about a lot of things. And one of the things is gain of function. If you don't know what that is, simply put, taking viruses, pathogens, adjusting them and making them essentially easier to catch more transmittable in hopes of unlocking those things. So in the future, if one of them show up, we're like, oh, we've already got one of those over here. We know exactly what it is. And you go over and you say, this is how you unlock it. And this is the kind of thing that we need to do with it to, to, to fight it. But with that comes risk. And Paul and Fauci got into it. SARS virus had a 15% mortality. We're fighting a pandemic that has about a 1% mortality. Can you imagine if a SARS virus that's been juiced up, if that were released accidentally? Dr. Fauci, do you still support NIH funding of the lab in Wuhan? Senator Paul, with all due respect, you are completely incorrect. The NIH has not ever funded gain of function research in the Wuhan Institute. Well, not all true. Did they directly? No. What they did do, though, was fund organizations that were working with Wuhan, which they knew. They did give money to Wuhan. But they funded a lot of other organizations, one in particular, 
they funded and he gave a large grant to money, Eco Health Alliance. Got money to Wuhan because they're looking at all kinds of things. By the way, the Eco Health Alliance, the guy that runs that, also has vested interest in a lot of different things. So there's a lot of, of mixture going on here. They sent $133,000 uh, to Wuhan in the first four years, 66000 in another year. Another sixty seven or 76000 went in 2019. So it's it's very interesting to see the way that this thing has played itself out. There's and uh, there's no doubt it's like playing God. We've talked about this. I mean, you're at the point now where you're kind of playing God. You're juicing up these things. You're making these things potentially bioweapons. Potentially, you're making these things stronger in hopes right i think i think most people look around and think to themselves in hopes of finding a cure for them finding a way to stop them before they spread like the coronavirus but you're also going to need a country that's not china that's all about china and protecting the communist party if this thing got loose anywhere else and you go and look there there's a new study that came out yesterday and it was a World Health Organization wanted to see it on all the things that not just us, but everybody got wrong. And was this thing preventable? And yes, of course it was. We messed up in a lot of ways and we got it right with the vaccine. A lot of other countries did a little bit better and they have not got it right with the vaccine. Some have done it horrible from top to bottom. But at the end of this, if this is a true, true, absolutely true report, The world should have paid more attention, but China should have been far more open. And yeah, don't think that money didn't get there. Is it as much as Rand is pressing him on as if Fauci said it was okay? I don't know about that. We're going to talk more about this because this is important. This is. China's goal is to dominate the world. That's their goal. That's what they want. They're continuing to push and push in places. There's no doubt about that. And they'll do whatever they have to do to protect the party and the nation, not the people, the communist nation of China. And if this thing ever escaped, which we'll really never know, because knowing would mean there would need to be repercussions. And I don't know if people have the cojones enough to want to force repercussions on China. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. I think other nations would. But what they really want is, if there is, if this thing really did escape, America needs to do something. Well, it affected you guys too. Yeah, but we don't want to get, you know, we, the, the, you guys need to fix something. You guys need to do it. Well, we would like to reap the benefits of whatever it is. But if you guys could do it, that'd be super. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show, Twitter. My pillow has got amazing towel sets. Right now you can get two towel sets for under 50 bucks. Normally it's like 110 bucks. No lotion-y feel, super absorbent. So you get the big towels, you get two of those, and then the, the, the medium-sized towels, if you will, and then you get the wash rags. All kinds of different colors, super absorbent. You guys will love these. On top of that, they get great deep discounts on their my slippers, the Giza Dream Sheets, the mattress topper, which is my favorite thing, and of course, the my pillow. Now you go to mypillow.com and you click on listener special and type in code Benson. It's that simple. When you do that, you can start saving big. Check out the my slippers, which I love. Everything comes with money back guarantee. If you're not happy with it, six days, you send it back. The majority of things come with a 10-year warranty. If something goes wrong, you send it back. Find out what you can do. Buy them up. Because I'm telling you guys right now, those my slippers are amazing. Towels are incredible. But if you have to do one thing, get the mattress topper. You would not be disappointed. MyPillow.com, promo code Benson. MyPillow.com, promo code Benson. Chad Benson Show. Take it anymore! Ah! 
get over it. It's time to forge a new path with your very own political cartographer, Chad. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Lift off. Now it's time to find out what's trending. What's trending? Yeah, what does that mean? I mean something, right? Like it's trending on the old internet. What's trending? All right, let's take a look. Lads and lasses and every other gender that's out there. See what's going on in the magical world of Google and the world. What are people looking at? Let's start in Google. Last 24 hours, Bitcoin price. You see that Elon Musk is like, yeah, I'm not going to be taking any more Bitcoin for Teslas. So you've got a giant battle of cryptocurrency. So let's not forget the the one the one that I think long term. If you ask me, which three of these would be the strongest? I'm not quite sure about Dogecoin. Bitcoin, mm, I feel like it's completely overbought. Uh, I look at Ethereum as maybe the one. So, but it's a battle right now. It's a battle of the Bitcoin. Over a million people searched that yesterday and continue to do so. Liz Cheney, obviously. It's funny to watch the way the people on the left treat Liz Cheney now. They hate her dad because he's evil. But they like the fact that she stood up against Trump. She liked that fact. That's Oh, everybody loves her now on the left. Ellen DeGeneres, she's ending her talk show. Gail Gadot disabled comments on controversial tweet. We're going to talk about this. So remember the other day, Gail Gadot, everybody was running to her because Josh Whedon, one of the directors, directed the, the, the last of, uh, oh, not the Suicide Squad, Justice League. Uh, she said he was, she was, he was mean to me. He did all of these things. He threatened my career. And now people are mad at her. And we'll tell you why we're going to talk about it. It's very interesting. Very, very interesting. Head on over to Twitter. See the battle that's going on there. So rep Ocasio-Cortez, AOC. Are battling. She's battling everybody right now. And, and why is that? Because she doesn't have anything. Remember, the relevancy of AOC, of Ilhan Omar, Ariana Presley, and those real progressives, so much of that was based on Trump. Right now, she's going after Andrew Yang because he apparently uh, doesn't hate Israel. <laughs> so, and, and that is nuts. And then, of course, Marjorie... Taylor Greene her got into something, so they've upped AOC's security. <gasps> what? Yeah. And gas prices. Again, let's go back to this. Gas prices are up not because we don't have enough gas. Gas prices are up because demand has gone up, and getting gas to the places so people can consume it has had some issues with the cyber attacks and the lack of drivers. But watching people yesterday, watching people act out yesterday, watching people fight yesterday is insane. Wow, yo, she spit on it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a guy filming a lady who smashed into another guy's car when he got out and they're waiting for gas. She spit on him. Then they squabbled, if you will. And uh, she got to see the bushes. Insane. Insane. Moments later, Colonial's like, hey, we're back online again. Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Hey, is this where I applied for college? Yeah, it is. Do you have your transcripts in your FAFSA? Sure do. Got them right here. Perfect. You also have your negative COVID test? Oh, I didn't know we were supposed to have that. 
Do you uh, have your COVID vaccination card, though? Didn't know I was supposed to have that either. Yeah, you're definitely going to need those. Let's just uh, move on with your form. What do you self-identify as? I don't know. I'm a guy and I'm white, so... All right, minor setback, but uh, have you done your racial sensitivity training? No. When was the last time you renounced your white privilege? Never. Look, buddy, I'm trying to help you out. Are you are you gay, trans, you have any Native American blood, any sort of oppression we can use to help you out? I mean, I got a 4.0, I was class president. Nobody cares about any of that. Look, let's just finish your application. Smile, say down with America, and put your fist up. Yeah. It's white kids that you need to go to college. Dad, that's right. No, it's, that's it. Did you see Disney? Disneyland's got their their woke thing that they're putting people through. I'm here to Sarah Churro in front of of a haunted mansion. I don't think I need to proclaim my privilege. <laughs> Why is that? Because I'm selling a Chiro in front of a haunted mansion. By definition, I'm living life 99% better than the rest of the world, and I'm selling you a Chiro in front of a haunted mansion that's not really haunted. No, you need to tell everybody you're, you're uh you're privileged. You're like, ah. that guy's right about college. Is there anything else? Is there anything else? Is there nothing else? Do you remember Modern? Do you ever watch Modern Family, Producer Phil? No, I've never seen it. So on there, there's, you know, it's, it's great. But you, you, you had the, the two guys who were married, right? And they're hilarious. Cam and them are hilarious. And they're going to try to get into a preschool. And they think they've got it nailed. Why? They're two gay guys with uh, their Vietnamese daughter. This is, this is, they're, they're there. They get there and they see their competition as they see it. Because, you know, in certain places across the country, what you guys don't realize is getting into some of these schools, it's about checking boxes, who you know. They look over. <laughs> it's, it's a lesbian couple. One of them is Native American. <laughs> the other one's black and in a wheelchair. And they're like, we're screwed. <laughs> Having nothing to do with anything real. That's like it. Can't you just say that you hate America? Down with America? That you're an oppressor? Something. Put something on here. I'm trying to help you. What will get you into college? That's the insanity of the times that we live. Case in point, math. To me, there are a few. Th- like, we should live in a meritocracy, right? Like where we're, if you're good, you, you, you get ahead. Sports is one of those things. If you're great at something, there is no... We give out participation awards, but that only goes for a certain level of things. You get to another level, and it's about can you do it or can you not do it? Can you play or can you not play? Comedy is one of those things. Now, there's always politics and everything, right? The whole world's a sales place. You're always selling yourself or selling something. And you know you can do this and you know you can do that. It's about getting the opportunity sometimes in certain situations that may help you get to some of these places better. So, yeah, there's, there's always a little bit of that. But at the end of the day, if you're a comic and you're not funny, no matter how much politics is out there, people are, aren't going to come watch you live. They're not. Even though they sell some of this stuff, like, oh, you should go see such and such. She's great. Or so-and-so's awesome. And they're like, they're not funny. Oh, no, but they are. No, they're woke. They're not funny. Dave Chappelle is funny. Daniel Tosh is funny. Jesselneck is funny. Some of these people start. So that's part of the meritocracy, right? You go watch. LeBron James is a great basketball player. I mean, not like his wokeness and his craziness over the last several months, but the reality is, is he was that way at 16, and nobody held him back. You couldn't. Why would you? Well, math. Math is now something we should be <sighs> slowing people down from advancing in. The growing equity movement now targeting math classes in California's public schools. This new framework seeks to discourage advanced math students from progressing ahead of their classmates and instead promote all kids at the same pace until their junior year. <clears throat> students who have shown higher achievement than their peers have been given fixed labels of giftedness and taught differently. Such labeling has often led to fragility among students who fear times of struggle in case they lose the label, as well as significant racial divisions 
<sighs> Translation. Kids are taught differently because Timmy over here, when I asked him what two plus two was, he licked the paper. Over here, Robin, I asked her what 5,000 times, you know, 36 was to the 20, and, and she and she got it. So we're not going to teach them. They're not the same. They're not the same. And that's okay. Or is it? Well, in some places, let's remember, equality, equity. With the equality of opportunity, but why not just give everybody the equity where we're all going to go at the same pace? We're not going to allow other people that might want to get ahead or who should be getting ahead to get ahead because it's going to make people around them potentially feel bad. Between 2004 and 2014, 32% of Asian American students were in gifted programs compared to 8% of white kids, 4% of black students, and 3% of Latinx students. I think this framework writes an obituary for our existing gifted and talented programs, and it's going to block the rise of talented kids to important roles in society, serving us as engineers, helping rockets get in the air and bridges getting built properly. Yeah, I'm going to go back to the whole thing when it comes to math. If I say producer Phil's dream is to go into space, and we're going to get him there. But I say, Phil, I got a great thing. You got an opportunity to go to space. Here's the thing. The people that put this rocket ship together, they use woke math. (laughs) They don't use math math. They use woke math. Producer Phil's probably not going to be thrilled to be going to space because the chances of him getting to space probably aren't great. Uh, in fact, he may not get to space. He may not get off the ground. It may just explode right there. But, Chad, what about all that white privilege? Let's go back to those numbers again. Between 2004 and 2014, 32% of Asian American students were in gifted programs compared to 8% of white kids, 4% of black students, and 3% of Latinx students. All that white privilege, except for the part where the Asian students got at. And in some places now... They're classifying Asian students as white. They're not really giving them the opportunity, you know, because everybody's into what do you look like? What do you look like? Oh, who do you like? That's what everybody's in. Oh, man. Where are you from? Where's your, where are your ancestors from? Who do you love? Because we've got to check boxes. Why is nobody saying Asian privilege? I'm just curious. Oh, because they work hard? They bust their ass? School's mightily important to them? They throw themselves into stuff? It's funny that when it comes to certain things in education, people of color, that you would say, well, we're talking about all the Asian hate that's going on, right? We have to have all these hate. But it's, it's great that Places like Harvard and many others can figure out a way to try to make it tougher for Asian students to get in because they don't feel like the Asian students are dominating. Well, why not? Is that, why, is that the white privilege? No, it's because they're gifted. They should be there. They absolutely should. If you're brilliant, you should be there. You've qualified for it. Suggested lessons address cultural issues like having students determine a fair living wage, followed by a discussion about whether that wage is fair and just and then encouraging activism. Quote, for example, if there are local organizations such as unions who advocate for workers, students might reach out to them about ongoing labor justice efforts. Yeah, that's not math. That's a story that you want to tell based on advocacy that you want to put out there. And by the way, if you don't think that I, you guys, I know I'm going to get to it, Chad, that Asian things being whitewashed and all this kind of stuff. There are school districts, places like Olympia, Washington, in the Lacey area, where Asians and white students have been put together because their test scores. Let's see. So it's about the test scores, not the color of your skin. What is this? It's crazy. And don't tell me, Hey, hey, we're going to have a math class today, and it's going to be about union organizing. It's not math. It's activism. While the framework offers guidance to districts, it's not mandatory. Some parents of gifted math students tell me they see where this is headed, and they say they are already exploring private schools. Yep. Keep doing that. Last week, LA Times ran a big article. You watch next year. 
some kids, especially in high school, heading into the 11th and 12th grade, they've been out of school for a year. They're now able to see their friends, and they enjoy the fact that they can get done with school by noon or one and get on with their lives. The amount of people that are going to be, uh, kids are going to be enrolled next year in independent studies, working at their own pace from home, is going to shock a lot of people. But when you start doing stuff like this, public education is going to look around. And while you're trying to woke everything up, other people are looking for places to put their kids so they can move on. I would be, it would be awful. If you were to say, hey, I know you're brilliant, and I know you should be learning calculus, but you've got to stay here with rudimentary math, how how lame would that be? Honestly, that would just be awful. You can't love... That's where we are, because now it's not even about... It's about the feelings. That's what we've done. We've replaced facts with feelings. We've replaced achievement with activism. We've got to stop that. We should be encouraging kids. Absolutely. Not discouraging them and then seeing them leave. And by the way, when they start to leave, because it's not those mid-level and kids that aren't very sharp kids that are leaving. It's the ones who will help you, especially when you look at your test scores across the board. Well, all the really smart kids went somewhere else. So we didn't do well. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at me. Text the program. Love hearing from every single one of you. I absolutely do. Rough Greens. My dog Doodle loves his Rough Greens. Make sure he gets it every single night. Probiotics. Mega 369. It's got vitamins, vegetables, minerals. It's got all these amazing things in it. And it's a supplement. You sprinkle it on your dog's food. I'm doing it for well over a year with my dog Doodle. It's given him extra life. But I, I'm already starting to, you know, I started it immediately as well with my puppies. And... Their coats are amazing. Their breath doesn't stink, which is a bonus, but they're happy and healthy. And getting your dogs off to a great start is amazing. Seeing what it's done for my dog Doodle for his joint pain and all of that stuff has been incredible, but also giving my other dogs a jump start is awesome. Right now, try it before you buy it. You pay for the shipping. They're going to send you a bag for free. All you have to do is go to roughgreens.com slash chad, ruffgreens.com slash chad. Get you a free bag right now. Sprinkle on your dog's food. See if it makes a difference. I think you'll be surprised. It's absolutely free. You pay for shipping. RUFFgreens.com slash Chad. Rough Greens makes any pet food better. Chad Benson Show. If you're part of the politically exhausted majority, don't fear. Your time to be validated and rejuvenated is here. Wake up. It's the Chad Benson Show. Gail Gadot, who two days ago everybody was championing because she stood up to Josh Wheaton. And she's a strong woman and, and all of those things. By the way, she is. For those of you guys who don't know, she's Israeli. And she served in the military. Which also means... She's Israeli and served in the military. And in serving in the military, you're part of the genocide of the Palestinian people. So she posted something yesterday about the conflict that's going on. And it was, it was, man, it was super Zionist. No, it wasn't. My heart breaks, she wrote. The country's at war. I worry for my family, my friends. I worry for my people. This is a vicious cycle. It's been going on far too long. Israel deserves to live as free as and as a safe nation. Our neighbors deserve the same. I pray for the victims and their families. I pray for this unimaginable hostility in. I pray for our leaders to find a solution so we can live side by side in peace. I pray for better days. And then she got destroyed. Yep. Then she got destroyed. How dare you? People are like, she couldn't even say Palestine. 
She couldn't even say it. She's part of the genocide. She called them neighbors. <laughs> oh, my God. You, see, you can't win. You, there are people out there that are just looking to do something to go against anything you do. You pray for peace? How dare you? How dare you do that? She did serve in the IDF, which is the their armed forces. By the way, Palestinians served there. There are about 1.8 million Palestinians that live in Israel. And more and more are joining the IDF. And they're saying things like, Israel's my home. What? Yeah. It's mandatory to serve in the military. In Israel, if you're Israeli, you're serving. Men serve three years, women serve two years. It's not very fair, but men, you know, I I thought it was about equality and equity. On top of that, because there is a diverse group of people, religions, some groups are asked, do you want to essentially? Do you want to volunteer for this? Some are excluded from that, but they're still able to volunteer if they want to. But it is kind of, you know, it just shows you what's what's all about. It's about the wokeness. It is. It's about the wokeness, and it's always about being woke. How woke can you be? Can you get woker? Is it possible to get woker? Probably. But at what expense? I mean, you just can't. I mean, she's she was in the military. She served over there. It's her country. What would you expect her to do? Hey, I hope we lose. Why are they fighting? Exactly. Why are they fighting today? Why today? Why is today today they're fighting? What happened now? What's the geopolitical thing? We're fighting over a wall still here. We're fighting over this land there. We're fighting over a map that's how old? But then you got a map over here. Well, what about the people that don't exist anymore? Because if you keep going back far enough, you're going to find some sort of group of people that used to have the land that don't exist. And then people are like, well, you're just being stupid now. It's... Nuts. My uh, national security staff and defense staff has been in constant contact with their counterparts in the Middle East, uh, not just with the Israelis, but also with uh, everyone from the Egyptians of the Saudis to the Emiratis, etc. And uh, I had a conversation with Bibi Netanyahu. Uh, I'll be putting out a statement very shortly on that. He didn't say Palestine. <sighs> You would have thought, there's got to be some, you know, God, you couldn't have come to, you know, I don't know, Pocatello, Idaho? Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Breaking news. People freaking out about the gas price. Is there going to be a shortage? First of all, there's not a shortage. So let's go back into that. Secondly, there's no reason to panic. Colonial will have everything up and running. So if you're on the southeastern part of the United States, all the way up to the East Coast, things will start to get back to normal in the next probably 24 to 48 hours. How? What did they do? They paid them off. Welcome to the cost of doing business in a modern world. Colonial pipeline that was taken over by Dark Side, the group in Russia. By the way, they build themselves essentially as Robin Hood, where they're robbing from the rich and, and giving. And they wanted... Three million. They got five million to get back control of their pipeline and of all of their computer systems. Cost of doing business nowadays. We talked about it with the cargo ships. Certain parts of the world, you're going to be in a position where you're going to have to decide hey, what do we do with our cargo ship that just got taken over? We pay them off. 
Why? Because that's the cost of doing business. This was the cost of doing business right here. Will it happen again? They'll go in, they'll refigure stuff, they'll rechange everything, and they'll protect it a little bit more. And most hackers, think you only get one of these, right? Because at some point in time, they're going to build another database, background, way to control it that people won't know about. They can bring that back online. So, so quicker. That's, that's, that's what happens. So you've got this now, this, this pipeline, right, that was taken over. Everybody freaked out. They bought stuff because we live in a world now where we just freak out and panic. We got a call from family that said, you better fuel up before you hit Tennessee. There is panic at the pump from Virginia all the way down to Florida. I was suspected just prices would go way up. I didn't suspect that there wouldn't be any the next day. We put a stop to the can sales th- today. People were coming in and, you know, five and ten cans worth of gasoline. They're just hoarding it. The first thinking is, oh, boy, prices are going to skyrocket and I need to fill everything I can with gas. And so uh, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy that actually makes the problem much more acute. Yeah. And that's what you had right here. People panicked, freaked out. They paid. It was just it was worth it to them. It was easier just to get it back. So that's what you've got. Not a shocker. I don't think anybody could be shocked by that. Like the reality is in this day and age, when you have the amount of money that these companies have, these hackers go in there and don't buy into the Robin Hood crap. I don't, you know, these hackers are not buying stuff for themselves. And I wonder how that fight, they wanted 3 million originally. And chances are people say, well, was Putin involved? Maybe not directly, but once he found it, it happened, and it was essentially people in his sphere as far as the country and parts of the other eastern, former eastern blocs that he has some serious influence on. Yeah, the reason it's probably five instead of three is because, like, give me two million. <laughs> it's like, oh, we better up it again. Uh, three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Yeah, and don't put – watching people put bags of gas in their car was absolutely hilarious. I thought my, my – people were essentially making Molotov cocktails out of their vehicles. They had to issue warnings yesterday. I think it's – think it's, you know, the people who run our consumers, goods and everything had to come out and say, don't do this because <laughs> – the chemicals will eat away at the bags. People are still doing it. So congratulations. You're panic buying. Now you have 12 bags and tons of, of, of gas that you overpaid for that you're not going to need to use. So enjoy that. That was some solid work. And all you had to do was go read a newspaper, go online, watch any kind of real news outlet, and you could have probably thought, I don't think we need to do this. But people panic. That's what they do. 12 to 15-year-olds can get the vaccine now. Some states are having issues because they've got a lot of vaccine, and it has slowed down the amount of people that are getting vaccinated. Some of that's to be expected because a lot of people do have it. So every state's trying to figure out a way to do two things. First, how do we get more people vaccinated? Secondly, what do we do with this gigantic amount of money that the feds gave us that we have to spend? It's like Brewster's Millions. Governor Mike DeWine, Ohio, he's got a plan. On May 26th, we will announce a winner of a separate drawing for adults. Adults who have received at least their first dose of the vaccine. This announcement will occur each Wednesday for five weeks. And the winner each Wednesday will receive one million dollars. One million bucks. So if you've been vaccinated already and you've got at least one vaccine shot, you're eligible for this. He talks about where this money came from. The Ohio Department of Health 
will be the sponsoring agency for the drawings, and the Ohio Lottery will conduct them. The money will come from existing federal coronavirus relief funds. Because they gave him so much money. So many of them got so much money. It's a million bucks. Now with 12 to 15, should we throw out scholarships? And we will do this every Wednesday for five straight Wednesdays, each time randomly selecting one student to receive the full four-year scholarship. So away it goes. It's very interesting to see how this plays out. Because, you know, other states are looking at how do we get more people vaccinated? And on top of that, what do we do with all this money? I mean, what, what, what do we do? We have a windfall. What you're saying is you didn't need that money? Well, and what happens in government? If you get it, you better spend it. Because if you don't spend it, they'll either want it back, or the next time you're asked for money, they'll say, well, what about all the other money you had? I mean, remember, when we did this last COVID stimulus package, we still had funds that hadn't been spent from the one before that. And they're already talking about trying to do another one. And no, enough, 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 E. Enough. It's time to cut it off. It's time to allow people to start getting back to work. It's time to do that. This is Scott Boatwright. Guy runs Chipotle. He's frustrated because he's trying to do everything he can to get people to come in. We talked to a guy the other day. It's Skyler Reeves. He's got five restaurants out here in Arizona. He's offering to pay scholarships to get people to come in. People across the country or small business, medium-sized businesses are doing things as crazy as, hey, we'll pay you just to come in for an interview. People are concerned about child care today as well as their own personal health. And so I think that's keeping people out of the workforce. Anecdotally, we're also hearing that folks just aren't ready to return to work just yet. Uh, as robust stimulus packages, as well as unemployment benefits, have been very strong over the past few months and will continue to be so through the summer. And we have a re-emerging economy. And so as, as many businesses are reopening, there's a need for more talent. And uh, there are plenty of jobs across the U.S. today for folks who are ready to get back to work. If you're ready to get back to work. I think five, maybe six Republican states have already gotten rid of their unemployment benefits the the extra that's come in because they saw it as a disincentive why would you want to go work if you can make the same money with no hassle and i don't have a problem with that and the continually using the i'm scared thing i I just you have access to vaccines and a lot of other stuff i think at this point in time if you're really truly terrified of this thing and i'm sure there are some people out there then you're going to have to probably find a new gig that you can work out of the house. You're asking workers during a pandemic to put themselves at increased risk. The CEO said in December, you're not going to require vaccinations. Do you see that changing? Well, we won't require vaccinations, Anna, but what we are doing is providing education to all of our 100,000 employees around why the vaccination is important. So for many people, you've got to decide is because it's going to be magical when the money goes away to watch how many people will go out and apply for a job. That's why right now, if you're sitting around and you you can kind of be a little fat, dumb and happy and stick it out. And most of you out there, it's not you. You're looking at your kids and stuff. You tell them now's the time. Now's the time to go do this because What's going to happen is you're going to be able to go in right now and probably get a little bit more and get some better opportunities earlier in this because eventually when these things go away, it's going to be a tsunami of people trying to get out there as fast as they possibly can. So take advantage of this. So when that happens, you're already in place. Oh, yeah, I never even thought of that. Most people don't. Most people don't. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter Tweet, text, love hearing from all of you. Raycon, best ear buds around. Love my Raycons. Love my Raycons. So I got my E25s, and I love them. They're my everyday ones. And and, and the, here's the other thing. On top of being my everyday, I, I beat them up, right? I, I throw my golf my golf bag, and, 
and uh, I, I do stuff like that that because that's what I do. I, I work out a lot. I don't think people realize how much I'm out there, you know, working out and golf and stuff, and I love having them. They help me in so many ways. First of all, it's just great to have something where I can, you know, listen to my audio books or, or podcast or any of the stuff that I want to do. Uh, but I like the fact that I don't have to charge them every second. Right? I get six hours of, of talk time, seamless Bluetooth pairing, 24 hours. The, the cases, you know, the, e, the E55s, cases, the, they're charging cases. So you charge them up and you put them back in, they charge up again. That's the beauty of them. No stems, no wires, which is another big thing for me. I don't like the stems, and I can't swing a golf club with wires. And I hated working out, even running when I had wires. That was, drove me crazy. These are incredible. And the other thing I love is the fit. It's the noise-isolating fit. Where I play golf out by my house, and I, and I talk about this, you guys have no idea that it's at times 20, 30 mile an hour winds. So to try to listen or hear anything half the time, you just couldn't do it. It's, it's that bad. These things are amazing. Right now, E25s, E55s. E55s start at about, I think it's 100 bucks. Right? It's 100 bucks. You're saving big when you go to buyraycon.com slash Chad. The E25s right now under $70. 45 day money back guarantee free shipping. Buyraycon.com slash Chad. Buyraycon.com slash Chad. Buyraycon.com slash Chad. Chad Benson Show. I usually don't get into politics. As an ordinary suburban housewife, I feel a little disrespected. I teach my children not to name calls. You are a blabbermouth! A blabbermouth! Come on, man! Um, guys, can we please keep the chatter to a minimum? Chad Benson. Free fries when you get vaccinated? Um, I got vaccinated. You're saying I could get this? It's Mayor de Blasio. It's the great city of New York. Hopefully the last time he's mayor. Because the Yang gang may roll on in there. But, so, we just talked about Ohio. Scholarships for kids. If you go in and get vaccinated, they may draw your name to get full four-year scholarship. Secondly, million dollars if you're over the age of 18. Chance to win every Friday. Every place is trying to do something else. Shake Shack and New York. You delicious fries. Why, Matt? But there's also a, a burger element to this. Oh, my God, there's a burger element. Let me, let me check with Bill Needhart. Is it too early in the day to eat a burger? No. This could be breakfast? Okay. I want you to look at this and think about, again, some people love hamburgers, some don't. Really want to respect all. Oh my God! Of life. Stop it! If this is appealing to you, just think of this when you think of vaccination. Mm. You get a voucher for a burger or sandwich. Vaccination. Mm. You get a shot. I'm getting a very good feeling. At a v- mobile vaccine clinic. Right this moment. Free fry. <sighs> That's how that rolls, kids. That's how that rolls. Can you? Can you be- That's a pretty good deal, man. I like Shake Shack. I'm just trying to think, like, what would be... If you were to get a free, like, pizza? Because, you know, Domino's and them would all like to get involved in some way, shape, or form. McDonald's, for sure. Pizza Hut. Yeah. What about Taco Bell? Everybody's trying to get involved. Everybody. I've said from the beginning of this, first and foremost, make it convenient. Put it where people go, not have you go to something that's inconvenient. If you put it in a Starbucks, we'd be good to go. Good portion of people would get vaccinated. I never thought of that. It's a possibility. You never know at the rate we're going. It might actually happen. It might. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. We have an issue at the border, and I don't care what Mayorka says here. Secretary of Homeland Security, it is 
a hot mess. And don't tell me when the surge began. The surge of uh, unaccompanied children uh, first began in April of last year, of April 2020, and it swelled from there. <sighs> There's a hot mess there. The growth of illegal immigration over the last two months, the two biggest months we've had in 20 years. President, vice president, the powers to be need to take a look at this because once the pandemic's over and it's coming to kind of a soft ending, if you will, there are going to be other things from issues like what's going on in Israel and elsewhere, but also things like immigration. And it's frustrating because so many people were worried about the pandemic, rightly so, that you forget that there's going to be a lot of other things. Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Gas prices will be coming down again. He's throughout the southeast, northeast. So the panic needs to stop. Colonial paid $5 million to the dark side to essentially get back control of all their stuff. By later today, through the weekend, everything will get back to normal, which is good. It's good. Politics still crazy. You expect that. Yesterday, what happened to Cheney, uh, Liz Cheney, uh, you know, I mean, and, and the BS that comes out of of so many people's mouths, I just find it to be ridiculous. I do. And, you know, you could sit here and, and they could spin it how they want. The Republicans have an issue and they've got to deal with it. Who, Who and what are they? I know there's a bunch out there threatening to start a third party. But they do need to figure out what they're going to be. It just shows that the, the whole conference is a big tent. People could have difference of opinion, come from different walks of life, um, represent different people across the country. Yeah, that's fine, Kevin McCarthy. But her differing opinion went against your opinion that, which originally you said you agreed with about Trump and what took place on January 6th and 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 you were like, oh, he's got, you know, this is his fault, paraphrasing. And then you went after him because everybody is racing to to be Trump's best friend because they they're they're fearful. They're fearful he will destroy them. Get in line or get crushed is kind of what it's all about. It was just something that we, you know, uh, many of my party felt they had to do. And, you know, we're moving forward now. And now we've got to find a replacement for her. And I'm, I'm looking forward to supporting at least Stefanik. I think she'll be a great spokesperson. For what? For Trump. Not a great spokesperson for conservative ideas. She's much more moderate. If you want somebody who, and this is the, and, and I think across the board, we, we need to start asking ourselves this. And I've, I've said this for a long time. Even with Trump, as much as he drove me crazy on the outside of things, I could look at him in the governing side of things. I always said there's two sides of Trump for me. Two sides. The first side was, what are the actions? The second side was, because of the chaos and craziness, the actions became overshadowed because it was about feelings and not about actions. I'm an action person. You can tell me all the things you want, all the things that you're going to do, all the things and how amazing you are. But if your actions don't match up to it, what's that do for me? What's that do for anybody? Well, in this day and age, all anybody wants is just tell me how amazing things are going to be. Just tell me how incredible. Just tell me all these things. Check off the boxes. Make yourself look great. This is what really matters. But then when your actions come out, and you don't match it, people don't hold people accountable. Cheney's voted far more with Trump 
than Stefanik, who is going to end up taking her place. Stefanik, though, supports Trump in the court of public opinion, which unfortunately now rules the roost. And to me, I go back to, is it about the actual action or are you more interested in the public opinion? 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show. your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Calvert County, Maryland. Now, Producer Phil, how far is that from you? Uh, Southern Maryland, probably about an hour, hour and a half. What's it like there? Give us a little description. Uh, a lot of farms, uh, a lot of fishing, um, very rural area. Rural area. Chances are Trump country. Well, it is. Every day, thousands of people cruise up Route 4 in Huntingtown, and when they get to Bowie Shop Road, they see this. It's just vulgar. I, it doesn't reflect Calvert County. The billboard depicts President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris in you-know-what. It says, don't blame Trump. You are stuck with these two bleep heads. And yeah, it really does say the word, which is a problem. We just don't think, we don't think kids should have to see that. Our parents have to explain that. People are upset. And the funny thing is, what they're upset about, in so much the message, it's the word. County commissioners said they may not have a choice. Well, there is nothing that we as county government can do for language that's on a legal sign. Board President Buddy Hans cited a 2015 Supreme Court decision. No government can dictate language on a sign or content thereof. You know, this country was built on foundation of free speech, and sometimes we like what that free speech says, and sometimes we don't. That's the beauty of free speech, and we don't have that anymore. It's been taken away in a lot of places. Not taken away, you still can have your free speech, but for a lot of people, it's free speech in a weird way, which is you can have it, but you just can't have it here. Because we don't want you here. Or the cancel culture side of things that goes on because somebody disagrees with 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 somebody, something somebody said or the other day people attacked me uh, because Charlie Kirk, who's not a fan of, but I found his tweet to be interesting, you know, about what's going on in Israel and him saying, well, the, the Israelis and Palestinians are at it again. People are dying. But the good news is there's no more mean tweets. That was obviously because Trump was the mean tweeter. They put a billboard up. People don't like it. But we protect the speech we don't like, which everybody should. Flame says it's not just a free speech issue, telling us pro-Trump and anti-Biden billboards have been posted here for years now, but she takes issue with this specific language and imagery. We have not complained about any other signs. It's this sign uh, we think is, again, damaging to all of us, all of us in Calvert, the GOP, the independents, everybody. Yeah. People are frustrated because they see a sign and they have to do what? This is what I've always talked about. It's the same thing that happened with, uh, with. do you remember, was it Breastgate? Was that they called boob, Nipplegate? When Timberlake and the Super Bowl, and you got to see Jen. Oh, my God, Jenna Jack. I said, you know what people are really upset about? they got to talk to their kids. <laughs> That's, now, that, you heard the lady at the beginning. She's like, well, you got to explain that to the kids. It's simple. Look, I, you know, it's a bunch of, you hear, let me tell you what it is, Jack. People who have money, nothing else to bitch about, who overthink things that are truly unimportant in so many ways, are fighting against each other. And if they can't do it on Twitter, this is essentially the Twitter for older folk. (laughs) The billboard. And they wrote the bad word, the S word. And you're going to see it for two seconds and then you drive on. Making a big deal out of it will, you know, bring people to it. But it is kind of funny. You have to talk to your kids now. I don't want to talk to my kids. I'm always amazed. I've always been this way. Like I'm, you know, and again, I grew up in a much rougher way than a lot of people. Because my dad, if you guys don't know, my dad died when I was like 16 of a drug overdose. But... He was uh, he was a tough dude. He, you know, he's not the kind of guy that you you know you want to meet in an alley. 
uh, on a late night. And, and I grew up in a, in, in, a, in a very interesting and tough way. And, and it was, yeah, it was at times just a little rough, to say the least. In saying all of those things, I just don't remember being very namby-pamby about some of these things. Like some of the stuff that people talk, you know, it's like, oh, my God, I wouldn't want my kid. What do you think your kids are exposed to every day? You don't think your kids are hear things on the playground if they're that young? And you don't think kids are exposed to stuff on the Internet? We're always trying to shelter when the best thing to do is just to go, there it is, look at it, let's get it over with and move on with our lives. And explain it and move on. Can't, man. You can't anymore because people are like, oh, God, it's just, it makes me uncomfortable. 323 538 2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. The story coming up next is awesome. How would you like to start with nothing and have a house and never spend a penny? Wait to hear the story. It is crazy fun. Love it. Again, first world problems. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show Twitter. Masterclass is amazing. It's about 41 cents a day. 41 cents a day. To learn from the masters in everything you can think of. From tennis, Serena Williams, Tony Hawk, skateboarding, Phil Ivey, poker, Wolfgang Puck, Gordon Ramsay. Cooking, Axelrod, Rove, politics and campaigning to Neil deGrasse Tyson, science. You can go on and on from literature to the best in the world. People that have done it teach you and share the experiences on how they got to where they got to and the things that people need to work on if they want to do it. It's about 20 lessons per class, and these are the best. Samuel L. Jackson talking about acting it is amazing how you write a script how you pitch these things how you have that one great novel in you how you bring it out how you form characters it is incredible it truly is you can learn today maybe you take your hobby for from from a hobby to something that you think i can really do this and it's simple and easy you go to masterclass.com slash benson you save big each class comes with things like Downloadable materials from recipes to workbooks. It's awesome. 41 cents a day is what it averages out to be. Save an extra 15%. Masterclass.com slash Benson. Save now. Masterclass.com slash Benson. Chad Benson Show. Me too. Hashtag immigration reforms. Hashtag help. I'm trapped in a hashtag factory and I can't get out. The Chad Benson Show. It's the end of the road for Ellen. Ellen DeGeneres will retire her successful syndicated daytime talk show after next season. She tells The Hollywood Reporter that when you're a creative person, you constantly need to be challenged. And as great as the show is, it's just not a challenge anymore. She insists the decision has nothing to do with the recent scandal over the show fostering a toxic workplace environment and claims this has been in the works for years. Next year will be the show's 19th season on the air. We'll be back. No, you out. 50 million a year is what she makes, by the way. 50 million a year. That's huge. She's worth about anywhere between 300 and about $500 million, depending on what you look at, uh, at the end of the day, uh, yeah. I mean, do you always want to challenge yourself? Of course you do. But this did not help you. People saying working for you was awful did not help you. People suing you as the story broke and then many started to sue you started to do what? Give other people the opportunity to sue you, and it just went from there and continued to grow. So, yes, the end of the day, the end of the day, this did not help. And you might want more challenge. You might have gotten bored. You know, I mean, it's, it's, some people can do that. Some people like, you know, people ask me, am I bored of what I do? No, I love what I do because the news changes every day. Things go on. And it's live. It's not taped. 
there isn't any of that stuff. I mean, you know, it's it's it. This is it. There's no net. There isn't any. But I also do other things. I've expanded in other ways. And, 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 you know, I always have things that I'm always trying to achieve because why wouldn't you want to? I think so many people get stuck in something and they just do it. And, and they're entertainment wise. Yeah, that could be crazy. But man, they also look and you got 50 million. But when you get to the point where you got a couple hundred million dollars at that point in time, you start saying to yourself, maybe I want to do something else. Maybe I want to do something else. And for creative types, a lot of times it's, going to other things, even potentially doing something similar to what you're doing, but in such a way that there's not that corporate side where you own and control most of it. Like, Could you imagine, like, Alan or any of these big people say, you know, I'm going to do a talk show, but I'm going to own it, I'm going to run it, I'm just going to put it on YouTube. I'm going to control it and talk about the things I want to talk about. So you go and look right now. And the perfect example, obviously, is, you know, somebody like Joe Rogan started out as a goofy podcast. You can go back several years, look at his podcast originally. Some of the stuff that he was sponsoring on the shows to get this thing going from adult toys to, to like, bongs and things. It's like it, he never thought it was going to become to this. But at the end of the day, what's it about? It's about, it's about control for a lot of these people. I can control my own life. I can do my own thing. I don't have to abide by A, B, C, and D that the corporate people want me to abide by. We'll see what happens. We'll see. We'll see. A bobby pin to a house? I live in San Francisco, California. So let me just say this. People have done this before. This girl, this lady, right? she, she, she wants to essentially trade a bobby pin for a house. She talks about for 5,000 years. We've 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 had money really, and we've 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 traded that now for goods and services. Before that, it was just trading, trading. Demi, I live in San Francisco, California. I'm 29 years old, and I'm trading a single bobby pin until I get to a house. So what that means is that I make one for one trades until I can get myself a house. So I can't buy anything, I can't use any money, and I can't trade anyone I know. I started. When, when I heard that, I'm like, did she say she can't trade anyone or to anyone she knows? <laughs> I'm curious about that. I can't trade. Yeah, because normally I was going to go, hey, give me a house and you can have my friend. Yeah, the one you think is cute. You just have her. <laughs> it's a very nice chat. People have done this in the past. And I, and I find it to be interesting. One of the funny things though, that made me laugh is she ends this. Honestly, I love that it's a bit of an F you to capitalism. No, it's not. No, it's not. Somebody bought all of those things that you're trading. Somebody created all of those things you're trading. That's that's what it's about. You want a house. You don't want to pay for it. You are paying for it. Cost you $4,000 to ship already because you had to ship a bunch of stuff. But along the way, what ends up happening? Well, you're trading stuff. How was that stuff made? It wasn't made because somebody wanted a sack of potatoes. It was made because people wanted a bobby pin or a car. That's how that works. She's on her way. We'll see what happens. It's going to be very interesting. Other people have done it. More people are trying to do it. And she's gotten things like Mini Coopers, diamond necklaces, and she started with bobby pin. What if you start with something better? That's what I want. What if you start with something like they should get the ultra rich to try to do something like this. Start with something totally insane. And see what you could, you know, trade up with. Like I've got a house and then you work your way up from next thing you know, you're going to the International Space Station. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Last 12 months, the highest paid athletes made almost $1.1 billion. Number 10 was Kevin Durant, all the way up to number one, Conor McGregor, $180 million. I think he sold a little drink thing. You guys have a blessed day. We got all the way, almost all the way through the week. And you know what I see? Friday. Night, night, Jack. This is the Chad Benson Show. 